Hi ladies, welcome back to the channel. My name is Carissa and I am the founder of Keep Me Curvy and my mission is to help women transform their bodies and transform their lives. So this is the second video in a series of videos around the seven day juice fast that I am on with a wonderful group of women. So yesterday I did a video about the fear of hunger and how sometimes on a juice fast you can experience hunger but not because you're hungry just because you're used to eating food and your body's sort of sending you signals saying oh we'd normally eat by now where's the food you know and maybe like how the environments that we grew up in can trigger certain emotional responses when we do feel hungry so for example what i was saying in yesterday's video was if you grew up in poverty or if you experience neglect or even in some cases abuse then feeling hungry might sort of trigger fear responses in your body and in your mind and that may be why you know you're overweight and I sort of got into that a little bit yesterday so I will link that video below if you want to listen to that video and just hear some of the rationale behind why some of us may overeat or may panic when we get hungry and eat the foods that fill us up quickly. So today's video I want to speak about something that actually happens on a juice fast and that is the emotional detox. Now I've been juice fasting for, I think I started my first juice fast in 2014, so that was like 10 years ago. So yeah, I've been on and off juice fasting for 10 years, not just for weight loss, but for vitality, for energy, for that glow, for clear skin, like you name it, I've done a juice fast for it. And it works, it totally works, like it works to get the pounds off, it works to get your skin glowing, it, it works to get your energy back and just like sort of revitalise your health a little bit. So they're all the reasons that I love doing juice fasts. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm currently on a seven day juice fast, me and a group of beautiful women, we are doing a seven day juice fast. Um, today is day three, today is day three. So yeah, but yeah, the emotional detox that can come with doing a juice fast. So what I have found is when you do a juice fast, if you've got like healing work to do, let's say the fear of hunger, that is a piece of work that needs healing. Like if you have a fear of hunger, then there's obviously things in your past that have caused you to have that reaction when food is scarce and that needs healing and that's an emotional need that needs addressing so that you can move forward and not maybe tend to overeat and not have that compulsion to, to eat you know, the foods that are heavy, that, that sort of give you that full heavy feeling that makes you ultimately feel safe. Like we need to be able to cultivate that sense of safety within ourselves without relying on food to do so. And that's what juicing almost exposes. It exposes that need to heal that relationship with food because food is taken away. So nutrients aren't taken away. Energy isn't taken away, you know, but, but physical hard food is taken away and that can expose some of our vulnerabilities around food and some of our real you know emotional responses and behaviors and habits when it comes to food and that can lead to an emotional response now oh, I'm gonna get emotional <laughs> so again it sort of reminds me of in the past when I was doing juice fast and I needed to lose the weight and I really wanted to lose the weight and it was causing me a lot of emotional distress being as heavy as I was and being in that low mental place and juice fasting was almost like it was the fix to it and the weight stayed off so it's not like I always say this about juicing juicing for me isn't a diet it's a reset it's something that resets your body it resets your health it resets your taste buds um, and if you allow it to it can actually be a catalyst for that healing process so there was a lot of times when I was bigger where I'd be doing a juice fast and I would be so emotional, like all the emotions would be pouring out of me. And when I looked back and I reflected on why that was, it was because I didn't have food to mask those emotions anymore. And like I said, if I'd felt hungry, not so much a physical hunger, but definitely a mental hunger, if I had that mental hunger, 
then that would cause a lot of insecurity, a lot of anxiety, and that would bring up a lot of emotions in me as well. So yeah, if you allow it to, you can really use this time where you are feeling a little bit vulnerable, a little bit emotional, but potentially if you are doing the juice fasting, you do feel this way, this could be a good time to really like get your journal out, think about all the, the things that have caused you to get where you are now and all of the like connections between food and you know overeating and emotion and maybe things that have happened things that people have said that have caused you to view food as a tool for comfort now when you're juicing it, it almost is like having okay so food sometimes when you're in an emotional place can feel like a hug a juice is somebody who's asking you to stand up when you juice fasting and you're in an emotional place, it's almost like you haven't got that warm hug, but you have got somebody saying you are strong, you can do this, stand up. And even though it's hard, it is so rewarding to get to the end of a juice fast and say, even though it was hard, even though I wanted to eat, even though I had this huge emotional detox and this emotional response because I wasn't eating food to mask those emotions. I still did it, I still stood up, I got it done and now at the end of the process I am, you know, however many pounds lighter, I've lost so many inches, I feel better, my skin's glowing, my hair's glowing, you know, so it is definitely worth it and I think yesterday I was talking about this tool that I had created around that fear of hunger and how I maybe overcame it myself and then how I could help other people overcome it too. So I did write some notes on my phone so I am going to have a look and see if there's any more I can give you. I think what I will do is I will create the tool in document form and once that's done what I will do is link it in these videos. So let me see. Yesterday I looked at some of the journal prompts that I'd written down, so I gave a couple yesterday, I'll give a couple more now. So one of the journal prompts that I'm reading now is, I'm hungry and I'm scared that, for me in the past an example would have been, I'm hungry and I'm scared that I'm going to be in pain. Like sometimes if you had that impoverished background, hunger meant pain physical pain because if there wasn't enough food to eat if you've ever been there you know you know where it feels like there's not enough food to eat and you do feel a sense of pain like there is a real pain in your stomach when that happens um as adults hopefully we don't experience that anymore because like i said yesterday we have money now to be able to pay for the food that we want you know we we can we can afford to buy food so yeah, even though that is the case now, the brain doesn't always register that and accept that because it sort of tries to take us back to where we were in the past. So on that note, another journal prompt is, I'm hungry and my brain is telling me. So this is a really big one. When you're hungry and you have that fear of hunger and in the past, it's almost felt like being hungry is a threat to your survival because you don't know when the next meal is going to come, your brain might be telling you, I'm hungry and I'm going to starve to death. Now that might seem very dramatic and I accept that is quite dramatic, but the brain doesn't know that actually there's going to be food in two days or there's going to be food later on tonight. It might just be taking a couple of hours. Your brain is almost scanning your environment and saying there's no food here. I need food to survive and if I don't get it, then I am going to die. So even though we're not in that position anymore, your brain may still have that response like, oh, there's no food, I'm not eating enough, I feel like I'm going to die. And for a lot of us, that's why we can't stick to diets, the low calorie restricted diets, because actually they're not sustainable in terms of they're not giving us enough food and our brains are sending these fear responses and this anxiety and this survival request and that is stronger than our will to stick to the diet. Juicing is a little bit different and the reason why juicing is a little bit different is because if you do a juice plan correctly and you get enough fruits and enough vegetables then you're actually getting all the nutrients that your body needs. 
So a lot of people talk about fibre. And they talk about the fibre that is lost in terms of the pulp coming out. Now, there is such a thing as insoluble fibre that lives within the juice itself. So you are still getting fibre. I explained it to one of my ladies quite graphically the other day. And her... um, Her concern was food wastage and how she didn't want to be wasting food. And I almost explained to her, like, think about a juicer and the process of juicing as your digestive system. So you will put, let's take, for example, an apple. You will put an apple in your mouth, you will chew it up. When the apple goes into the blender, it's almost like, not the blender, sorry, into the juicer. When the apple goes into the juicer, it's almost like putting it in your mouth and then the the sieve or the motor, it's like your mouth chewing that food. Then what happens is it goes down and your body extracts the nutrients. So it takes away the juice from the food. (laughs) And then when your body does what it does, it sort of you know, eliminates the rest, let's just put it that way. And that is what the juicer is doing with the food. So yeah, you might not be getting that soluble fibre, that fibre that is actually coming out from the pulp, but your body would have eliminated that anyway. Um, So I'm not saying you can live on juice forever, but it is safe to do. And you don't need all that fibre because a lot of us are already backed up with things that need to be eliminated anyway. So yeah, that that's that really. Um, but yeah, back to the tool. So one of the things that I'm going to to make sure is included in the tool is that we allow our emotions to arise. So I've put here, allow yourself to feel, acknowledge and explore whatever is coming up. Don't shut yourself down, cry if you need to, feel angry if you need to. So really give yourself permission if you are on a juice fast, even if you're not, even if you have emotions that are coming up just through life, then allow yourself to feel those emotions, you know, explore them, write them down, speak about them. You know, sometimes we get called crazy if we talk to ourselves out loud, but sometimes you do just need that little bit of a conversation with yourself just to get things off your chest. So if you're not a big fan of writing, maybe put it down in your notes or speak, you know, just speak your feelings. There is nothing wrong with doing that. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave this video here and just maybe, like I said, I will create the tool and put it in the description box as a download. Hopefully I can do that. I'm very new to YouTube, so I'm going to see if I can do that. Hopefully I can. And yeah, if you are on a juice fast, then keep going. It is so worth it. Even if you slip up, even if you have like an apple or a pear or something to eat, you know, just keep going, get back up, keep going. Um, It is so worth it at the end of the day. And if you resonate with this fear of hunger and the emotional detox, whether you're on a juice fast or whether you're not on a juice fast, then like I said, the tool will be available for free. Use it, you know, um, see how it helps and allow yourself to process. I think the, the most important part of healing your relationship with food and your relationship with your past and your body is just getting things off your chest and expressing them and coming up with new ways to reframe what you've been through and allowing your mind and your brain to catch up to where you are now. So that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, Again, if you resonate, then, you know, leave me a comment. You know, I'll have a chat with you in the comments. And yeah, if you want to hear more about this juice journey and the reflections from the juice journey, then do subscribe because I am actually going to try and, you know, do more reflections around the journey of weight loss and body transformation in general, but specifically juice fasting this week as we are on this seven day juice fast. So yes, 
that's it and I hope to see you soon. Bye.